Hello everyone, welcome to another anatomy video. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veterinary Anatomy channel. Today we will talk about the medial muscles of the thigh in the dog. So let's get started. The medial muscles of the thigh in the dog include the sartorius muscle, the gracilis muscle, the bectineal muscle, and finally the adductor muscle. Okay, so now we will move and talk about the medial muscles of the thigh. Let's move the phone in like this here so that we can have an overview about the medial surface of the hind limb as you can see here. So, in this case, the medial uh, muscles include uh, the gracilis muscle, the sartorius muscle, the bectineal muscle, and the adductor magnus muscle. So let's start with the first one. It's a broad muscle located on the medial surface of the hind limb just under the skin called the gracilis muscle. If you look exactly, you will find that the gracilis muscle originates from the symphysis pelvis or pelvic symphysis here and inserts down to the medial tibial crest here, this area and this area here. So to the medial tibial crest, to the tibia on the medial surface here and at the same time uh, a tendon from this muscle moves toward the tubercalcani or calcaneal tuberosity. Again, the gracilis muscle. It's a broad muscle found uh, medially, originate from the pelvic symphysis here, inserts to the medial uh, um, surface, medial proximal surface of the tibia, and at the same time inserts also to the tubercalcani or the calcaneal tuberosity. So here we can see also the pelvic symphysis, which is the origin, the pelvic symphysis here, which is the origin of the gracilis muscle. The origin of the gracilis muscle. While the insertion of the gracilis muscle, as we described before, <coughs> is the medial, medial tibia, medial tibia, this area here, and at the same time, it inserts also to the tubercalcaneo or the calcaneal tuberosity. This muscle uh, innervated by the obturator nerve. In this case, let me show you the obturator nerve. What you have to do is just to dissect this muscle and move it to the side. Just under the gracilis muscle here, we can see the obturator nerve. I hope it's clear for you. This is the obturator nerve. The obturator nerve moves uh, inside the pelvis through the obturator foramen and exit the pelvic uh, cavity um, to be um, there just, you know, under the gracilis muscle and innervate also the gracilis muscle. I hope it's clear. This is here the obturator nerve for the innervation of the gracilis muscle. The gracilis muscle is, um, if you consider the origin and insertion of this muscle, is responsible for the extension, for the extension of the hip joint, extension of the hip joint. At the same time, it's a flexor. Look at the direction of the tendon. So it's a flexor of the stifle joint. So contraction of this muscle will flex the stifle joint. And at the same time, it rotates the forelimb medially. Rotates the hind limb, sorry, medially. Rotate the hind limb medially. This is the gracilis muscle. The next muscle which we can see here is, let's jump directly to this muscle located cranio, cranio medially here. It's the sartorius muscle. The sartorius muscle in the dog, as you can see, has two parts. It has two parts. This is the cranial part of the sartorius muscle, and this is the caudal part of the sartorius muscle. Again, look exactly, this is the sartorius muscle. The sartorius muscle originates there from the iliac crest, from the iliac crest, 
and in cells to the medial tibial uh, crest and to the fascia of the stifle joint here in this area here. This is the sartorius muscle, cranial part of the sartorius muscle and caudal part of the sartorius muscle. These two parts of the sartorius muscles are innervated by the saphenous nerve. Saphenous nerve is that nerve which we can see moving just next to this artery. This is the femoral artery. So here we can see the saphenous nerve which gives branches for the innervation of the sartorius muscle. The saphenous nerve is a branch of the femoral nerve. The function of the sartorius muscle is a flexor from the original insertion. Look exactly here. So contraction of this muscle will flex the hip joint, flex the hip joint, and at the same time it will um, uh, also uh, extend extend the the stifle joint it will extend so contraction of this muscle will extend the stifle joint let me show you now the origin of this muscle if you look at this here we can uh, see uh, as we say you know the origin of the sartorius muscle is this area of the um, of the ilium so the iliac crest the iliac crest this area here okay now the next muscle we are going to talk about in this view here is the bactinial muscle so this is the bactinial muscle in this case we just need you know of course it was like this before so we can see just a small part of the bactinial muscle this muscle can be also palpated in live animals so if we dissect the gracilis muscle, move it caudally, the sartorius muscle, move it uh, cranially, in this case we can easily dissect and find the, the bactinius muscle. Bactinius muscle or bactinial muscle originate from the iliopubic eminence and inserts to the distal medial surface of the femur bone. Let me show you the bone again. So if we put the pelvis like this, like this exactly like this so you will find that the bactinial muscle originate from this point here which is the iliopubic eminence the iliopubic eminence so we have of course one here one there iliopubic eminence and inserts of course uh, to the medial distal surface of the femur bone medial distal surface of the femur bone okay so contraction of this muscle of course will cause somehow like I mean eleva elevation of the hind limb at the same time rotation uh, uh, of this uh, hind limb or adduction 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 of the hind limb toward the body so in some publication they say that you know uh, Contraction of this muscle will may cause in, in some um, dog breeds like um, like a, a pressure between the femoral head and the acetabulum. So the femoral head and the acetabulum. Let me show you something here. So normally, uh, if we put the, the the femur bone inside the acetabulum like this, so and uh, consider the origin and the, the insertion of this muscle from the iliopubic eminence up to the medial distal surface of the femur bone. In this case, uh, contraction of this muscle while walking will make like a little bit pressure between the femur head and the distal uh, part of the acetabulum causing in some dog breeds like a micro fracture uh, fractures of the acetabulum in this area which will be absorbed later and uh, uh, finally, in some breeds, again, it could uh, cause like a, um, absorption of this part of the acetabulum and at the end the acetabulum will look like a flat, allowing the femur head to laxate out of the acetabulum, something like this. Um, okay, so I just want to, to talk about this, you know, because we are talking about the bactinius uh, muscle. Next or counter to the bactinius muscle, so this is the bactinius muscle, next to the bactinius muscle, 
So here we forgot to, tell, to, to, to say that uh, the bectinius muscle is also innervated by a branches from the obturator nerve. Branches of the obturator nerve, which we can see here. This is the obturator nerve. Okay, counter to the bectinial muscle, or bectinius muscle, here we have the um, adductor magnus. The adductor magnus muscle, it's a muscle located directly on the caudal surface of the uh, bone, of the femur bone, originate from the ventral surface of the ischium and inserts to the linea spira medially on the femur bone in this area here. This muscle is responsible from the name adductor magnus. Adductor magnus is responsible for the addiction of the hind limb toward the midline, toward the body. And this muscle is innervated by the obturator nerve. As you can see here, the obturator nerve is located directly on this muscle, the adductor magnus. Okay, so for the adductor magnus, again, if we put the bone like this, you will find that the adductor magnus originates from the ventral surface of the ischium, this bone of the pelvis, and inserts medially, distally on the femur bone here. Here, in the lateral view, I would like also to show you that under the biceps femoris here, if we dissect it and move it to the side, here we can see the adductor magnus muscle. This is the adductor magnus muscle. It's a huge muscle. It serves, as we described previously, on the caudal surface of the femur bone. So this is the femur bone. And if I would like to show you the bone here, so the adductor magnus in this case inserts to the caudal surface here of this bone. Adductor magnus. Again, in this group, we talked about the gracilis muscle, the sartorius muscle with cranial and caudal part, just in the dog. We talked about the pectineus muscle, and finally about the doctor magnus muscle.